Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and today we're going to talk about how we can use Airtable automations to be able to update records. We're actually going to use three different examples for this. One where we use the triggering record to update the record itself, a second one where we update a linked record, and a third where we want to update a record that doesn't actually yet have a relationship with the initial triggering record. Let's dive in here and we'll explain each of those use cases as we go along. In this case, I've set up a base, and this is kind of like a CRM or a project management tool that we'll use for this particular example. We have some additional tables, but we don't need all of these. We're primarily looking at this project intake, which is the main record type that I'm dealing with. I also have accounts, which are our customer accounts, and we'll be working with a couple of fields here. And I have a contacts table for individual people that work at those companies. Now this project intake, we have a process by which we have incoming project requests and we want to be able to triage them to see if they're a good fit for our company. So in this first example, we have a quick start implementation and we've realized that the sales reps sometimes forget to fill out the field when we initially start. And if you know about Airtable, unlike certain fields like project value, which is a currency field, where we can actually have a default value, when it comes to a single select, if I edit this field, there is no default value that we can bake in here. And so in order to do this, we want to be able to update the status of this record when that record is created for the first time, because we're going to say that the default, the incoming status is discovery. Let's go over to our automations tab. We're going to add a trigger and we're going to say that this is when a record is created. Now we need to choose a table and this will be our project intake table. And we'll choose a record here. We can just use our quick start implementation. And then we will run an action. And for this action, we want it to be to update a record. So when we get in here, we can choose the table, the same exact table, project intake, because the main record that kicks us off is a project intake. And now the record ID is where we're going to actually use the Airtable record ID from the triggering record. This is important to make sure that this matches so we know to say, here's the incoming record that triggered it, now update that existing record. And now we'll be able to update the fields that we want. In this case, we're choosing status. We don't need to use any dynamic values here. We're just going to say that it's going to be discovery. Every time we create it, put it in the discovery stage right away. Now we can generate a preview without this actually doing it, or we can run it as configured. Let's run it as configured. And it looks like it's worked. We've set that value to discovery. We'll go ahead and update this and we'll say starting stage, or I should say status is discovery. Give that a name and we'll turn that on so that it's active for future records that we create. Now, if we look back at our data here, we can see that that's updated to discovery. And normally when we'd create a new record, well, you know what, let's give it a try. Let's see if it works. New record. And you can see that automation runs and populates that value for us. Great. That's our first example where we're updating the record itself. Now we want to use a second example where we say we have a project. It's further along in the process now. It's in qualification for this Triara group. And the Triara group has a project value for it. So here's what we're going to do is we want to be able to update something about the Triara group. If I look at the accounts, you'll notice that they have a customer stage with several different values of where they are in their customer life cycle. Now, Triara group is in steady state. They're just kind of going along. But because this project is going to book, we want to be able to say, hmm, let's update that stage. So instead of steady state, they're going to go and have a current project, which will be a signal to us that things are moving along well. To do it, we will have the project intake, and we want to be able to do this when the status changes to equal booked. Let's go into our automations. We'll create a brand new automation, and we'll say when a record matches conditions, We'll do this on the project intake again. And we'll add a condition to say when the status 
is book, and we'll choose a record for this step. Uh, UI feature enhancement. Okay, that works. And now we need to update our record. We'll update the record, and we're going to select this time instead of the project intake, we want to update the account. And we need to be able to plug in not the Airtable record ID this time, because remember, the Airtable record is from the project intake form. Instead, we want to be able to take a look at the account. We've got the account, which is RMA, but we want to be able to use the ID here because we're going to update that account based off of that account ID. And we want to change the customer stage now to tell it that there is a current project in process. And if we will run it as configured again this time and run the test, and we can see that that's now current project for RMA. And we'll relabel this to say update account for current project. And we'll turn this automation on as well. Let's go test it out. We'll test it on our custom integration build. And we will now book our project. We'll go back into our accounts. And Triara Group, you can see just updated with that automation to say it's now current project. So those are our first two examples, one where we've updated the core record itself, one where we've updated a related record. And now let's say we have a situation where we want to update something behind the scenes and we don't actually have that ID yet. In this case, we have our third record, UI Feature Enhancement. It's already booked. And we know that the client email is this andy at rma.com. But let's pretend that this came in from a form. Maybe we asked them for their email address and we didn't want them to actually select a contact record because we didn't want to expose that out to them. We need some way to be able to identify and associate this contact record with the project intake form. Let's go to automations. You know the drill, we'll create a new automation. And this time we'll say when the record is created, that's fine. It's a project intake record. And we're going to choose that UI feature enhancement. And then the run actions this time, we can't just update the record because we don't know the ID of the record to update. So the first thing we need to do is find records. And we're going to find records from the contacts table. And we want to find records based on a condition. And for our condition, we're going to say where the email address is. We want to plug in a dynamic value here. We're going to say, let's plug in the client email. It's going to look for us in the contacts table where the email matches the client email that's on that project intake form. And let's test the action. And it does find a record for us. There's this Andy Belke. Again, remember this wasn't part of the intake form. We didn't know his name, we just had his email address. So it was able to find us the right record. Now, if we were gonna go Fully through the, with this, we'd have to make sure that there's only one record, not multiple records, but we're not going to take care of all those steps. We just want to show it in its most simple form. So we find a record, and then we want to add an action where we update the record. And this time, we will update the record of the project intake, but we're going to link it and we'll, we'll use the record ID from when it's created. So like we did in the first example, and we'll choose a field. And now we need to choose point of contact, which is our link to the contacts table. And now we know the ID. And we know the ID because we found it in the find records step. So we click on find records. 
and we'll make a new list of the Airtable record ID because we were able to find that. And that's all the fields that we need for this. Let's run as configured. Does this work for us? And it's now updated it to say that Andy Belke is the point of contact. If we go look back at our data. We can switch this on if we want. If we go look back at our data, you can see that this automation ran successfully. Now, normally we do it on record creation, but in this case, it was able to take the email address, go out and look at this contacts table, search all of our contacts, all these other ones are email at example.com, find the correct contact, and then associate it back with the project intake form. I hope this was helpful for you to see how we can use automations in three different ways to be able to update records with Airtable automations. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below.